With their friendship already tense, the Beckhams have delivered another blow to the royal rogue couple. Historically speaking, at least, the British royal family has succumbed to a wide variety of unfortunate events. Vikings, VD, hunting accidents, Prussians, and that's only to name a few. Well, folks, it looks like now we can officially add a couple of new names to that list, specifically that of a soccer star and his pop star turned designer wife. This week, Beckham, the Netflix limited series about sporting great David Beckham and his wife Victoria Beckham, former Spice Girl turned designer and mother, continued to set the bar even higher when it comes to a successful documentary. The show scored the number one spot on the streamer, and even now, weeks after its release, it has only slipped down one single notch. They were the it couple back in the 90s and the aughts, and essentially overnight, the show has remade the couple into newly hot commodities. Naturally, when thinking about the incredible success of this British couple, our mind shifted to consider a certain royal couple, who also attempted to make it big with a docuseries on Netflix, but didn't quite hit the mark like Bex and Posh have. Believe you me, the contrast could not be more acutely obvious. In December of last year, we finally got to see Harry and Meghan's six-part docuseries titled Harry and Meghan. It was more than two years after the couple had signed their $157 million deal with Netflix. Never before had members of the royal family allowed cameras to record their every move to such a personal degree. So when the show finally came out, the world excitedly tuned in to watch the son of King Charles and the daughter-in-law, Meghan, lay reputational siege to Buckingham Palace. Viewers were sucked in and TV history was made. Soon enough, Netflix was excited to tell the world that Harry and Meghan was their biggest documentary debut ever. In spite of all the attention in the media, and in spite of all the dirt dishing, Harry and Meghan didn't quite manage to get the number one spot on Netflix. Instead, that prize went to Wednesday. But even so, for Harry and Meghan and Netflix, in the beginning, it looked like the series was a winner. But what came next was something no one could have predicted. First of all, Harry and Meghan's soul-bearing and TV whining saw their U.S. favorability absolutely plummet, and in only a matter of a few weeks. Between the beginning of December 2022 and January 18th of 2023, Harry fell 45 points in terms of public opinion in the U.S., and Meghan fell 36 points according to polling done by Redfield and Wilson for Newsweek. The same publication gave us the headline, the more Prince Harry and Meghan Markle say, the less Americans like them. And now, almost a year since many royal commentators had to sit through hour upon hour of Harry and Meghan's whining, things are not looking much better for them. So far, they have failed to regain all the ground they lost back in December and January. The most recent data from YouGov shows that in July and August and September, the same period of time that Meghan was trying to make a comeback, showing up at Beyonce concerts and posing for Instagram shots, Meghan's popularity took a new hit. It fell seven points to positive 10. Harry's position remained the same, though. He's still up 24 points. And then last week, Family Guy joined South Park and SNL in making fun of Meghan and Harry, portraying their lives as mostly empty and meaningless. But over in the land of the Beckhams, things couldn't be brighter. People love the show, and as a result, David Beckham and Victoria Beckham are right back in the spotlight. Since their show's debut, David has gained half a million social media followers, and there's renewed global interest in the couple. I bet Victoria is so excited she might allow herself a single piece of chocolate. If you look at Google Trends data, you can see that the release of Beckham series has seen a big spike in associated searches. It completely outstrips the comparatively minor jump in search interest that went along with Harry and Meghan's release. And then on Rotten Tomatoes, Beckham has an average audience score of 98%. Harry and Meghan's docuseries was 19%. Anna Wintour even showed up to the Beckham premiere, and there are also reports that Victoria is going to be making a documentary of her very own. I think you get the point here. Out of the Beckhams and the Sussexes, one Netflix series has proven to be a big hit, and also a huge asset to the couple's image. But the other Netflix series, hmm, it's only made the couple look worse. Brand Beckham has never looked so good. Brand Sussex, on the other hand, is failing. And all of this comes after the Daily Mail reported back in July of this year, 
that Harry and Meghan's friendship with Victoria and David was absolutely done after a tense phone call and some alleged finger pointing. David, according to the mail, had been left absolutely bloody furious after learning that Meghan and Harry suspected that he and Victoria were leaking negative stories about them to the media. And it doesn't seem like this Netflix situation is going to smooth things over. So even though Beckham was watched by fewer people in its first week than Harry and Meghan, the positive thing here is that the former series seems guaranteed to propel David and Victoria to even greater careers, and the latter has basically left Harry and Meghan in a much weaker position. Meghan and Harry seem to have no idea about how entitled, how out of touch, how self-absorbed they come across. I mean, when you look at the king, the queen, the prince and princess of Wales, the Duke and Duchess of Edinburgh, you can see a real difference in the way they behave. Meghan and Harry believe that paying for awards and then faking car chases in New York is going to get them attention and sympathy. Now, it might get them attention, but it certainly doesn't get them any sympathy. The Wales family, on the other hand, they're just better at playing this PR game. You can see them out and about with their children at sporting events, at picnics, at formal royal events like the coronation. And you can see those children are being raised with such love. William and Catherine come across as very relatable. They're so involved with their children, they take them to school. Now, obviously, the palace PR knows what they're doing. But still, I believe Catherine had a lot of input where her children were concerned. And Diana also always took her boys to normal places like McDonald's and the park, roller coasters. She tried to give them a normal childhood. And it seems like William appreciated that, and now he's doing his best to pass that on to his children. Harry, on the other hand, well, he just does whatever Megan tells him to. Megan told a story one time that she had to crawl through the trunk of her car, but today she's got to have a seven-car convoy to go a single block on a personal engagement. On the bright side, at least she's not doing any royal duties. The stories Megan tells are completely insane, and usually they don't even make sense. I mean, that story about crawling through the trunk of a car. At that time, she supposedly was making millions of dollars. And, you know, people on a fixed income without much money at all have better cars than Megan claims she had. Another problem with that story is that her father funded her until she ditched him when she met Harry. Megan claimed that she had to crawl through the trunk of her car when she was out hunting for jobs. She didn't have millions until she began the job in suits. The millions is a figure that was made up by the sugars based on what Megan could have earned, but certainly not what she was saving. My video today has ended. What do you think about Megan? Please tell me your opinion below in the comments. Don't be afraid to like and share this video with anybody else who would enjoy it. And besides that, please subscribe to get more updates in the future. Thank you so much for watching, goodbye, and I'll be back to see you all tomorrow.